A wealthy man handed $350 to a struggling mother to buy food for her child. The following day, he found her at the grave of his lost love, who had passed away 23 years earlier. Mark Sterling sat alone at a high-end New York restaurant, surrounded by opulence, yet none of it could alleviate the void within him. He stared through the rain-streaked window, watching the drops fall like the tears he refused to shed, each one pressing on the emptiness in his chest. The world outside was bleak and cold, reflecting the desolation he felt deep inside. For over two decades, his life had been shrouded in gloom ever since his wife, Anna, had died unexpectedly. Mark couldn't move past her death. No matter how much success he achieved, no amount of money could fill the chasm left in his heart. Despite building a vast financial empire, his achievements felt hollow. Every business meeting, every extravagant dinner, felt like a futile distraction from the grief he carried daily. Mark absent-mindedly swirled the wine in his glass, staring at the circling liquid. Wealth, fancy parties, grand events, they all felt tasteless to him now, their allure long gone. He sighed, the weight of the years pressing heavily upon him. Despite all his external success, Mark was profoundly lonely. He had no children, at least none he was aware of. Anna had always been hesitant to discuss starting a family, and Mark hadn't pressed the issue. Now, he regretted it deeply. What he wouldn't give for a part of her to still be alive, someone to care for, someone to love. After paying the bill, Mark stood and put on his heavy coat. The lively chatter of the restaurant faded into the background, becoming a distant hum. To him, it was nothing more than white noise. Stepping outside, he was greeted by the relentless rain, cold and unforgiving. The city around him buzzed with energy, but Mark felt only the damp chill and the overwhelming weight of his solitude. As he walked home, he passed by familiar landmarks, places that he and Anna had once frequented together. Each corner, each building, was a reminder of happier times, times when life felt simpler and joy seemed more accessible. Now, all that remained were memories and a gravestone. Like every other day, he would visit Anna's grave tomorrow. Paris would have been the more natural resting place for her, but for reasons Mark never quite understood, she had chosen New York. Perhaps because it symbolized the life they had begun anew together before it was tragically cut short. Walking along the rain-soaked street, Mark noticed something out of the corner of his eye. Beneath a store's awning, a young woman sat, cradling a baby. Her hair was damp, and she looked fragile in the rain. The sight stirred something deep within him. Mark hesitated, unsure of what to do. Over the years, he had donated large sums to charity, but he was not accustomed to interacting with those in need on a personal level. Yet, something about this woman's gentle way of holding her child resonated with him, as though it touched a long-buried part of himself. Moving closer, rain dripping from his coat, Mark reached into his pocket and pulled out $350 in cash, money he had just withdrawn from an ATM. He extended it to the woman. Take this, get yourself and your baby some food. The woman looked up, surprised, her eyes wide with disbelief before softening into gratitude. Thank you, she murmured, her voice trembling. Thank you so much. For the first time in a long while, Mark felt something stir within, a connection to a complete stranger, as if their pain mirrored his own. Without saying more, he nodded and walked away, but as he continued his journey, he couldn't shake the image of the mother and her child. It was as though something dormant had awakened inside him. When Mark finally reached home, he was exhausted, physically and emotionally drained. He lay in bed, the steady rhythm of rain against the window the only sound accompanying him. Closing his eyes, the image of the woman and her baby lingered in his mind. Tomorrow, he would visit Anna's grave, just like always. But little did he know that the routine visit was about to alter the course of his life forever. The following morning, Mark followed his usual routine. He woke early, dressed in his usual tailored suit, and prepared for the day ahead. As Mark prepared for his visit to Anna's grave, the overcast sky outside seemed to reflect the somber mood that had been his constant companion for years. The city was still damp from the storm that had drenched it the night before. He grabbed his coat and stepped out. 
the familiar weight settling onto his chest as he braced himself for yet another solemn journey to the cemetery. As Mark walked, his thoughts drifted back to the young mother and her child. He couldn't quite comprehend why that encounter had lingered in his mind. Over the years, he had seen countless people in need, but something about this particular woman had stayed with him. There had been a look in her eyes, a blend of desperation and something deeper that he couldn't place. It unsettled him in a way he hadn't expected. When Mark arrived at the cemetery, he took the well-trodden path to Anna's grave. The area was quiet, save for the occasional rustling of leaves and the distant murmur of the city. He knew this place too well, every visit was the same. He would stand before her headstone, speak to her as if she were still there, then leave feeling just as empty as he had since the day she died. But today felt different. As he approached, something caught his eye. Someone was already at Anna's grave, kneeling in front of the headstone. Mark's heart skipped a beat. It was the same young woman he had encountered the previous night, the one with the baby. She was hunched over, her shoulders shaking as if she were crying. Mark froze in his tracks, his mind racing. What was she doing here? How could she possibly know about Anna? The coincidence was too strange, too unsettling. Mark cautiously approached her. Excuse me, he said, his voice hesitant and unsure. The woman looked up, startled, her eyes red and puffy. She quickly wiped her face with the sleeve of her worn jacket. I'm sorry, she mumbled, trying to pull herself together. I didn't mean to intrude. Mark shook his head, still grappling with the oddness of the situation. You were there yesterday, he said slowly, piecing together the events. Outside the restaurant. I gave you some money. The woman nodded, glancing down at the baby in her arms, as if that gesture alone explained everything. But for Mark, it didn't. He needed answers. Why was this woman, this stranger, at his wife's grave? What are you doing here? Mark asked, his voice now firmer. How do you know Anna? The woman hesitated, as if unsure whether to speak. Then, with a deep breath, she looked up at him, her eyes filled with a peculiar blend of pain and resolve. Anna, she said softly, was my mother. Mark felt the ground shift beneath him. His breath caught in his throat, and for a moment, he wondered if he had misheard her. He stared at the woman, trying to comprehend the words she had just spoken. Your mother? He repeated, his voice barely audible. That's impossible. Anna never had a child. The woman shook her head, her expression unreadable. She did, she said quietly. She had me. She just never told you. Mark felt as though the world had come to a standstill. His mind reeled, trying to make sense of what she was saying. This couldn't be true. Anna couldn't have had a child. She would have told him, she wouldn't have kept something like that from him. Or, would she? He took a step back, the weight of this revelation crashing down on him. No, he muttered to himself, more in disbelief than anything else. That can't be right. There's no way. I know this is hard to believe, the woman said softly, her voice steady but filled with emotion. But it's the truth. My name is Grace, and Anna was my mother. Mark's chest tightened as the reality of her words began to sink in. He looked at her, Grace, and then at the baby in her arms. His mind was racing with a thousand questions, but he didn't know where to start. Why didn't she tell me? Mark asked, his voice cracking under the weight of emotion. Why would she keep this from me? Grace looked down, her expression sad and conflicted. I don't know, she admitted. I never knew her. She died before I ever had the chance to meet her. I was raised by another family. Mark's heart pounded in his chest. For over two decades, he had mourned Anna, believing he had known everything there was to know about her. And now, suddenly, he was being confronted with the possibility that she had harbored a secret so deep, so profound, that it changed everything. A secret that had been buried with her for all these years. He took a deep breath, struggling to process it all. I don't understand, he whispered, his voice full of confusion. Mark shook his head, trying to make sense of it all. 
Why now? Why are you here? Sophie met his gaze, and for the first time, Mark saw something in her eyes, something familiar. There was a flicker of Anna in them. I found out about her a few months ago, Sophie explained softly. I've been trying to piece together the truth ever since. When I discovered where she was buried, I had to come. Mark stared at her, still struggling to wrap his mind around the revelation. His emotions swirled confusion, disbelief, anger, but beneath it all, there was a small glimmer of something else, hope. Hope that maybe, just maybe, his connection to Anna hadn't been entirely lost. He glanced down at the baby in Sophie's arms, and something shifted inside him. If Sophie was telling the truth, if Anna had really been her mother, then this child was his grandchild. A part of Anna still existed in the world. For the first time in years, Mark felt something other than grief. He didn't know what to say, but he knew one thing, his life had just changed in ways he never could have imagined. He stood there, frozen, staring at Sophie, still trying to absorb what she had just revealed. The wind picked up, rustling the leaves around the cemetery, but all Mark could hear was the pounding of his heart. The baby in Sophie's arms stirred, letting out a soft whimper, and that tiny sound seemed to jolt him out of his daze. How? How is this possible? Mark's voice was barely audible. His mind raced with questions. He felt betrayed by the very memory of Anna, as if the woman he had mourned for over two decades had been someone he never truly knew. Yet, deep down, he could see that Sophie believed every word she was saying. I know it's a lot to take in, Sophie said, her tone gentle but steady. I've spent my entire life trying to understand too, but I'm telling you the truth. Anna was my mother. Mark's chest tightened, his heart heavy with disbelief. Why didn't she tell me? He muttered, almost to himself. The thought that Anna had kept something so enormous from him was unbearable. How many nights had he lain awake, wondering what their life could have been like if things had gone differently? And now, those would-haves took on an entirely new and painful significance. Sophie shook her head slowly, her eyes full of empathy. I don't know why she kept it from you, she said softly. I never had the chance to ask her. She passed away when I was still a baby. Mark's thoughts whirled as he tried to make sense of it all. There had to be more to the story. Who raised you, then? If Anna was your mother, why didn't I know about you? Sophie looked uncomfortable, glancing down at the ground as if the weight of the explanation was too much to bear. After she died, I was placed with another family. I grew up not knowing anything about my real parents. I didn't even know where to start looking for you until recently. All I had was her name and a few bits of information I could piece together. Mark's heart ached. He had lived his life believing he knew everything there was to know about Anna. Only to discover that there were entire chapters of her life he had never even glimpsed. So, you came here looking for answers? Mark asked, his voice heavy with emotion. Sophie nodded. Yes, I wanted to understand who she was. I wanted to know why she kept me a secret. And when I found out where she was buried, I knew I had to come. Mark's gaze drifted to Anna's headstone, her name carved into the cold, unyielding stone. For so long, he had visited this grave, speaking to her, trying to make peace with her absence. But now, standing here with Sophie and the baby, that fragile peace felt shattered. Everything felt different, his memories, his grief, his understanding of who Anna had been. He took a deep breath, his mind desperately searching for something solid to hold onto in the midst of this emotional storm. And this baby, Mark said, his voice cracking slightly as he gestured toward the child in Sophie's arms, is this. My grandchild? Sophie looked down at the baby, a soft smile breaking through the tension on her face. Yes, she said quietly. His name is Daniel. Mark stared at the baby, so small and delicate, and felt his heart swell with a mix of shock, disbelief, and something else, hope. Daniel was a connection to Anna, a living link to the life they could have had together, a life that had been kept from him, but that he now had the chance to embrace. As Mark stood there, the weight of it all threatened to overwhelm him. For years, he had been stuck in the past, mourning Anna and the life they'd lost. But now, as he looked at Sophie and Daniel, 
he realized that life hadn't completely disappeared, it had continued on, quietly, without him. And now. It was here, right in front of him. He was being given a chance to reclaim a part of his past, but the betrayal still hung heavily over him. How could Anna have kept this secret from him? How could she have made such a life-altering decision without even telling him she was pregnant? I don't understand, Mark finally said, his voice hoarse. Why would she hide you from me? Why would she go through this alone? Sophie's face softened, though sadness lingered in her eyes. I don't know all the details, but I can imagine. Maybe she thought you wouldn't want the responsibility of a child. Or maybe she thought you were too focused on your work to be a father. I don't know, Mark. I wish I did. Mark shook his head, the weight of her words pressing down on him. But she should have given me a choice. She should have let me decide. Sophie nodded. Maybe she was scared. Maybe she didn't know how to tell you. Or maybe. Maybe she thought she was protecting you. The idea that Anna might have kept Sophie a secret out of a misguided attempt to protect him left Mark conflicted. He had always believed that Anna trusted him, that they were partners in everything. Now, he was beginning to realize there were parts of her life he had never truly known. Mark's eyes met Sophie's again, and for the first time, he felt a strange sense of connection, not just to her, but to the life he had never known existed, to the possibilities that had been lost but could now be reclaimed. What do you want from me? Mark asked quietly, his voice barely a whisper. Sophie hesitated, then looked him in the eye. I don't want anything from you. I just want to know where I came from. And I think you deserve to know the truth about your wife. Mark nodded slowly, her words sinking in. The truth about Anna, the truth he had spent so many years without. He didn't know what would happen next, but one thing was clear. His life had just changed in ways he could never have imagined. There was no going back to the way things had been. And maybe, just maybe, that wasn't a bad thing. Mark stood in stunned silence, unable to fully grasp the enormity of what Sophie had just revealed. Anna had a daughter, asterisk his asterisk daughter, a life he had never known, hidden from him all these years. The betrayal hurt, but it was mixed with confusion, regret, and something he hadn't expected, responsibility. Sophie and the baby in her arms were living proof of a past he hadn't been allowed to be part of, but they were here now, standing in front of him. I still don't understand, Mark finally said, his voice quieter now, the sharp edge of anger softening into something more vulnerable. Anna never told me she was pregnant. How could she have kept this from me? Sophie's eyes flickered with empathy. I don't know why she made that choice. I've asked myself the same question over and over again, but I never got any answers. All I know is that she made that decision, and it's affected both of us. Mark took a deep breath, his thoughts swirling. Anna had always been private, even with him. They had argued about it often, about how much she kept to herself. But this, this was a secret on a level he couldn't have imagined. Do you know anything about her? about why she did it? Mark asked, his voice tentative, almost afraid of the answer. Sophie sighed, looking down at the baby in her arms. I wish I knew more. The people who raised me didn't know much about her either. I've spent the last few months trying to piece things together. But the truth is, there are a lot of gaps. Still, I know one thing for sure, she loved you. Mark's eyes widened in surprise. She told you that? No, Sophie replied softly, shaking her head. But I've seen it in everything I've learned about her. The way she spoke about you to people, the way she lived her life, it was always clear that you were important to her. Even if she kept you in the dark about some things. Mark clenched his jaw, feeling a mix of frustration and sadness. For years, he had struggled to make peace with Anna's death. To come to terms with the fact that they would never have the future they had dreamed of. Now, this revelation had reopened old wounds he thought had healed. He wasn't just mourning the loss of his wife anymore, he was mourning the life he had never known, the daughter he had never had the chance to raise. And you, Mark asked, his voice strained. Why now? Why did you decide to find me? 
Sophie met his gaze steadily, her expression resolute. Calmness in Sophie's voice surprised him. I didn't find out Emily was my mother until a few months ago, she said softly. Before that, all I had was a name and a vague story about my adoption. When I learned the truth, I knew I had to come here to find out more about who I am and where I came from. Honestly, I wasn't sure what I would discover. Mark felt his breath catch in his throat. He could see the weight Sophie carried in her eyes, the burden of a past she hadn't been able to access, a burden that had now, in some way, become his as well. He glanced at the baby in her arms, now fast asleep, the gentle rise and fall of his small chest almost surreal to Mark. This child, asterisk his asterisk grandson, was a living link to Anna, a continuation of the life they had shared. Even if it had been hidden from him for all these years. Daniel, Sophie said, breaking his thoughts, as if sensing what he was thinking. His name is Daniel. Mark's gaze softened as he looked at the baby again. Daniel, he repeated quietly. The name felt unfamiliar on his lips, but grounding in a way he hadn't anticipated. For so long, he had felt adrift, going through life without any real purpose. But now, standing there with Sophie and Daniel, something inside him was beginning to shift. I didn't come here to ask for anything, Sophie continued, drawing Mark's attention back. I'm not expecting you to play a role in my life or Daniel's. I just needed to know the truth. I needed to understand where I came from, and now I do. Mark stared at her, feeling a surge of emotion well up inside him. He didn't know what Sophie wanted from him, but he knew one thing for sure, he couldn't just walk away. He couldn't turn his back on her or on Daniel. You're my daughter, Mark said, the words heavy in his mouth, foreign and full of meaning. He had never imagined saying such a thing, least of all in a cemetery, standing in front of Anna's grave. And that makes Daniel my grandson. Sophie looked at him cautiously, unsure of where he was going with this. I've spent my whole life building something, Mark continued, his voice quiet but resolute. But none of it ever mattered. Not really. Not after Anna died. I just... I didn't have anything left. But now, I'm realizing maybe I still have a chance. A chance to be something more than just a businessman. Sophie blinked, a mix of surprise and skepticism crossing her face. What are you saying? I'm saying that if you'll let me, I want to be part of your life, Mark said, his voice breaking slightly. I've missed so much already, but I don't want to miss anymore. Sophie stared at him, her expression unreadable for a long moment. Mark could see the hesitation in her eyes, the fear of letting someone into her life she had never known. But there was also a flicker of hope, faint but unmistakable. The hope that maybe, just maybe, this could be the start of something new. I don't know if it'll be easy, Sophie said finally, her voice soft. There's a lot we don't know about each other. Mark nodded. I know. But I'm willing to try, if you are. Sophie glanced down at Daniel, then back at Mark. Okay, she said quietly. We can try. For the first time in years, Mark felt a small spark of warmth in his chest. It wasn't much, but it was enough enough to give him hope that maybe, despite all the loss and pain, there was still something left for him to hold on to. As Mark walked away from the cemetery that day, his mind was a swirling storm of emotions. The revelation that Anna had kept something so monumental from him not at him, and the thought of Sophie and Daniel lingered in his thoughts. His life, once so controlled and predictable, now felt completely upended in the span of a few hours. The city bustled with its usual energy, but Mark moved through it as if on autopilot. The encounter with Sophie had shaken him to his core, forcing him to question everything he thought he knew about his past. As much as he wanted to be angry, to feel betrayed by Anna, he couldn't ignore the strange sense of responsibility he now felt. Sophie was his daughter, and Daniel was his grandson. He couldn't walk away from that. Back at his apartment, the rain had started again, tapping softly against the windows. Mark stood in the dim light of the room, staring out at the city. His thoughts returned to Anna, her laughter, the way she used to look at him, the dreams they had shared before everything had fallen apart. For years, he had tried to keep her memory alive through his grief, 
trying to preserve her in some small way. But now, with Sophie's revelation, Mark began to wonder if he had ever really known Anna at all. Why had she hidden this from him? What had she been thinking in those final months of her life? Could talk without distractions. Richard arrived early, nervous anticipation bubbling inside him. The cafe was cozy, with soft lighting and the comforting smell of freshly brewed coffee. He sat at a corner table, glancing at the door every few seconds, waiting for Sophie to arrive. As he waited, his mind replayed the events of the last few days. Finding out about Sophie, the journal entry, the revelation that Anna had hidden so much from him, not out of betrayal but out of fear. It all still felt surreal. The photo of them together, their smiles, their happiness, felt like a distant memory now. He couldn't reconcile that Anna with the one who had kept such a monumental secret. But he also couldn't deny the truth he had read in her journal. She had been scared, trying to protect him, thinking she was doing what was best. The bell above the cafe door jingled, snapping him out of his thoughts. He looked up to see Sophie walk in, her expression unreadable. She spotted him and made her way over, her steps hesitant but determined. As she sat down across from him, the air between them felt heavy with unspoken words. For a moment, neither of them said anything. Richard could see the resemblance to Anna more clearly now, the same eyes, the same quiet strength. He cleared his throat, searching for the right words. Sophie, he began, his voice low but steady, thank you for coming. Sophie nodded, her expression softening slightly. I wasn't sure if you would call, she admitted. I had to, Richard replied, his eyes meeting hers. After everything. I couldn't just walk away. Sophie looked down at the table, her fingers lightly tracing the edge of her coffee cup. It's a lot to take in, she said softly. For both of us. Richard nodded in agreement. It is. But I've been thinking a lot, and I want you to know. I don't want to lose more time. I know we can't change the past, but I want to be part of your life, and Daniel's too. If you'll let me. Sophie looked up at him, her eyes searching his face for sincerity. I've spent my whole life wondering who my father was, she said quietly. And now that I know. It's strange. I didn't know what to expect when I found you. Richard's chest tightened. He could feel the weight of all the years they had missed, all the moments they could never get back. I don't know what to expect either, he admitted. But I want to try. I don't want to miss any more of your life, or Daniel's. I'm ready to be here now, if you'll have me. For a long moment, Sophie didn't speak. She studied him, as if trying to decide whether to trust him. But then she gave a small nod. Okay, she said softly. We can try. Richard exhaled, relief washing over him. It wasn't an instant fix, and he knew the road ahead would be difficult. Full of unanswered questions and emotional wounds that would take time to heal. But this was a start. And after everything that had happened, it was enough. They spent the next hour talking about her childhood, about Daniel, about the gaps in their lives they were just beginning to fill. It was awkward at times, and neither of them had all the answers. But there was a tentative sense of hope growing between them, a fragile bond slowly forming. As they stood to leave, Richard hesitated for a moment before speaking again. Sophie. Thank you. For giving me this chance. Sophie smiled, a small but genuine smile that reached her eyes. Thank you for reaching out. They walked out of the cafe together, the city bustling around them. For the first time in years, Richard felt something other than the emptiness that had defined his life since Anna's death. It wasn't a full healing, but it was the beginning of something new, a chance to reclaim a part of his life that he had thought was lost forever. As they parted ways, Richard couldn't help but glance up at the sky. The rain had stopped, and the clouds were starting to break, revealing small patches of blue. For the first time in a long time, he felt the faint stirrings of hope. And maybe, just maybe, he could build something meaningful with Sophie and Daniel, something that could heal the wounds of the past. Would make everything clearer, make the pain less somehow. But it's just… complicated, isn't it? Richard nodded, understanding the weight of her words. 
It is. Complicated and painful, for all of us. He hesitated, glancing down at Daniel, who had started to fuss lightly in Sophie's arms. But now we have the chance to try and make sense of it, together. Sophie looked down at her son, gently rocking him as he settled back into a quiet state. I spent so long feeling like there was something wrong with me, she admitted softly, her eyes focused on Daniel. That I wasn't wanted, that I was a mistake. But hearing that she was trying to protect both of us. I don't know, it doesn't take away the hurt, but it helps. Richard swallowed hard, emotions tightening his throat. I've spent years asking myself what I could have done differently, how I could have been there for Emily in those last months. But now, knowing this. I wish she would have let me in. I wish we could have faced it together. Sophie looked up at him, her gaze steady but softer now. I don't know what she was going through, but maybe she thought she was saving you from something you weren't ready for. Maybe she was trying to protect you from the responsibility of raising a child when your life was already full of other pressures. Richard rubbed a hand over his face, the reality of it all pressing down on him. But I would have wanted to be there, he said quietly. For her, for you. I would have wanted to be part of your life from the start. Sophie nodded, her expression a mixture of sadness and understanding. I know. And I'm starting to believe that. I think I've held on to the idea that she didn't want me for so long, it's hard to let go of it. But maybe now. Maybe we can start from here. Richard smiled faintly, a sense of hope threading through the conversation, however fragile. That's all I want, he said. To start from here, to try and build something together. I don't know how this is going to go, or how we'll figure everything out, but I want to try. I want to be part of your life, and Daniel's. Sophie glanced at Daniel, then back at Richard, her expression softening further. I want that too, she said, her voice almost a whisper. I want to try. The two of them sat there for a moment in silence, the weight of their shared past lingering, but the future beginning to feel a little lighter. It wouldn't be easy, they both knew that, but they had taken the first step. Thank you, Richard said after a while, his voice thick with emotion, for giving me this chance. Sophie smiled, a small but genuine one. Thank you for reaching out, she replied. I wasn't sure if you would. Richard nodded, glancing down at the journal still resting on the table between them. I'm glad I did. And I'm glad we're here. They stood to leave, the tension between them easing into something more familiar, more hopeful. As they stepped outside, the city moved around them, bustling and vibrant, but for the first time in a long time, Richard felt a sense of clarity. A sense of purpose. The rain had cleared, and the sky was beginning to show hints of blue. As they walked down the street together, the past didn't feel so heavy anymore. It would always be there, but now, they had the opportunity to create something new. And for the first time in years, Richard felt like he had something to look forward to a future that, despite its complications, held the promise of healing and connection. Maybe, just maybe, he could finally move forward. Fallen asleep in her arms, his tiny face peaceful and unaware of the heavy emotions swirling around him. She let out a soft sigh and nodded again, this time with a little more resolve. I think that's all we can do, she said quietly. One step at a time. Richard smiled faintly, feeling a warmth in his chest that had been absent for so long. That's all I'm asking for. Sophie looked at him. The guardedness still present, but it was starting to fade. It won't be easy. There's a lot we still don't know about each other. I know, Richard replied, his voice gentle. But we'll figure it out together. I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere. For the first time since they had met, Sophie smiled, a small, tentative smile, but it was real. Okay, she said softly, her voice carrying a mix of uncertainty and hope. They sat there for a moment longer in comfortable silence, the enormity of their situation still looming, but no longer feeling quite so impossible. It was not closure, not entirely, but it was a beginning. As Sophie stood to leave, Daniel still cradled in her arms, Richard rose too, not wanting the moment to end but knowing they both needed time. 
Thank you, Sophie, he said, his voice full of sincerity. For giving me this chance. Sophie glanced at him, her expression softening. Thank you for wanting it, she replied quietly. We'll talk soon. Richard nodded as she turned to leave, watching her walk out of the cafe and disappear into the bustling city. For the first time in years, he didn't feel trapped in the past. There was still so much to work through, but he had hoped now, hope for the future, for a relationship with Sophie and Daniel. As Richard stepped outside, the sun had begun to peek through the clouds, casting a gentle glow on the city streets. He took a deep breath, feeling lighter than he had in years. It wasn't the end of the journey, but it was a new chapter. And for the first time, he was ready to move forward. Couldn't shake the lingering questions about why Emily had kept such a significant secret from him. But as much as those thoughts haunted him, he knew he had to focus on the present. On the chance he had been given to build something new with Sophie and Daniel. In the days following their meeting, Richard and Sophie continued to navigate this delicate new relationship. Their conversations were careful, tentative, like two people feeling their way through unfamiliar territory. But there was progress, slow but steady. Each time they met, Richard noticed small shifts, Sophie's guardedness slowly beginning to fade, Daniel growing more comfortable around him. Richard made an effort to spend time with them, taking small steps to be a part of their lives. He offered to help Sophie with little things, picking up groceries or watching Daniel for a few hours when she needed a break. It wasn't much, but it was his way of showing her that he was committed, that he wanted to be there not just in words, but in actions. And Sophie, for her part, started to let him in. She shared more about her childhood, her struggles, and the gaps in her life where she had wondered about her real family. It was hard for her to talk about, and Richard could see the pain in her eyes as she recounted her feelings of abandonment, of wondering why her mother had left her. But each time she opened up, their bond strengthened just a little bit more. One afternoon, as they sat in a park watching Daniel play on the grass, Sophie turned to Richard with a question that had clearly been weighing on her mind. Do you ever wonder why she did it? Why she didn't tell you? She asked softly, her voice filled with a mix of curiosity and sadness. Richard paused, taking a deep breath as he considered his answer. Every day, he admitted. I've gone over it again and again in my head, trying to understand her reasons. I think she was scared, scared of how I'd react, scared of how it would change our lives. Maybe she thought she was protecting both of us. Sophie nodded, her gaze thoughtful as she looked out at Daniel. I guess I'll never really know why she made the choices she did. But hearing you say that. It helps. It makes me feel like maybe it wasn't about me being unwanted. Richard reached out, placing a hand gently on her arm. You were never unwanted, Sophie. Not by me, not by her. I'm sure of that. She looked at him, her eyes glistening with unshed tears, and gave him a small, grateful smile. Thank you. As they sat there in the park, watching Daniel toddle around, Richard realized that the heavy weight of the past wasn't gone. But it was becoming easier to carry. The pain of Emily's choices and the years he had missed with Sophie and Daniel would never fully disappear. But now, there was something else, a fragile hope for the future, a chance to build something meaningful out of the fragments of what had been lost. In that moment, Richard knew that while the past had shaped them, it didn't have to define them. They had the opportunity to write a new story, and for the first time in years, Richard allowed himself to believe that perhaps the future could hold happiness, love, and family once again. About where we go from here. Richard's heart tightened as he listened, watching the emotions flicker across Sophie's face. Richard's heart tightened as he listened, watching the emotions flicker across Sophie's face. She was clearly grappling with something big, and he wasn't sure what to expect. I've spent so long being angry, she continued, her voice barely above a whisper. Angry at my mom for leaving me, for not telling me the truth. Angry at you for not being there, even though I know now that you didn't know. And I don't want to carry that anger anymore. But, there's more I need to share with you. Richard's mind raced, unsure where this was going. What is it? 
He asked gently, his voice filled with concern. Sophie took a deep breath, her hands still fidgeting. When I started looking into my past, trying to find out more about my mom, I also looked into her life before she met you. And I found something. Something I didn't expect. Richard's heart pounded in his chest, his mind already spinning with possibilities. What did you find? Sophie hesitated, clearly struggling with how to say it. I found out that before she met you, she had another relationship. Anne? I think I have a half-sibling. A brother. Richard's breath caught in his throat. A brother? He echoed, his mind reeling. He had never imagined this possibility. Did she? Did she know about him? Sophie nodded slowly. I think she did. But she never told anyone, not even the family that raised me. I don't know much about him yet, just that he was born before she met you and was given up for adoption too. Richard sat back, the weight of this new revelation settling on him. He had spent years believing he had known everything there was to know about Emily, only to find out that she had kept not just Sophie, but now potentially another child, from him. It was almost too much to process. I'm sorry to drop this on you, Sophie said, her voice shaking slightly. I've been holding on to it for a while, trying to figure out what to do with it. But I thought you deserved to know. Richard shook his head, still trying to absorb what he had just heard. I'm glad you told me, he said softly. I just... I don't know what to say. I don't either, Sophie admitted, her eyes filling with tears. I don't even know if I should try to find him or if he even wants to be found. But I couldn't keep this from you. Richard reached out, placing a comforting hand on Sophie's arm. We'll figure it out together, he said, his voice firm but gentle. Whatever this means for us, for you and Daniel, we'll face it together. Sophie looked up at him, her eyes filled with a mixture of fear and hope. You really mean that? I do, Richard said without hesitation. I've already missed too much. I'm not going to miss anything else, not if I can help it. Sophie nodded, wiping away a tear. Okay, she whispered. We'll figure it out. They sat there in silence for a moment, the enormity of the situation hanging between them. But in that silence, there was also a sense of unity, a feeling that despite all the secrets and the pain of the past, they weren't facing this alone. As they stood to leave, Richard glanced down at Daniel, still bundled up in his stroller, blissfully unaware of the complexities of the world around him. For Richard, seeing Daniel was a reminder of the future they still had in front of them, a future that, while uncertain, held the potential for healing and connection. As they parted ways, Richard couldn't help but feel a strange mixture of emotions, shock, confusion, but also hope. He had spent years believing his life had ended with Emily's death, but now he realized that perhaps it was only just beginning again, in ways he never could have imagined. Richard felt his heart clench painfully as he stared at the letter, the weight of Emily's words crushing him. She had been pregnant, and she had kept it from him because of something he had said. The realization was like a punch to the gut. He had never imagined that his words, perhaps said offhandedly, could have led to this, to her keeping such a monumental secret. I don't understand, Richard said, his voice barely a whisper, his hands trembling as he placed the letter down on the bench. She thought I didn't want children? That I didn't want you? Sophie finally turned to look at him, her expression full of sadness and understanding. I don't think it was that simple, she said softly. Maybe she thought she was protecting you because she was afraid of how things might change. She probably believed she was doing what was best for both of you. Richard's mind raced, flashing back to countless conversations they had had over the years. He remembered vaguely saying once that he wasn't sure about having kids, that his career was demanding and complicated. But it had never been a firm decision, and certainly not something he would have used to justify losing out on something so profound. I? I didn't know, Richard murmured, shaking his head. I didn't mean it like that. I would have wanted to know. I would have wanted to be there for you. For her. Sophie nodded, 
but the pain in her eyes was unmistakable. I've wondered my whole life why she didn't tell you. I grew up thinking maybe she didn't want me, or maybe she thought you wouldn't. But reading that letter, I realized it wasn't about not wanting me, it was about fear. She was scared of what it would mean for both of you. Richard felt a wave of guilt wash over him. How could he have been so blind? How could he not have seen how fragile Emily had felt, how much she had been carrying on her own? She should have told me, he whispered, his voice raw. I would have wanted to be part of your life, Sophie. I never meant for her to feel like I didn't want you. Sophie's eyes filled with unshed tears, but she nodded in understanding. I know that now. I think she was just afraid that telling you would change everything. Maybe she didn't trust herself to handle it, or maybe she thought you didn't need the complication. I'll never fully understand her reasons, but reading that letter has helped me see things differently. Richard leaned forward, his hands clasped together tightly as if trying to hold himself together. I would have loved you, he said quietly, his voice full of regret. I would have loved you and been there for both of you, if only she had told me. Sophie wiped a tear away, her voice breaking slightly as she spoke. I know. And I'm sorry, too. For a long time, I was angry at both of you. But now I realize it was more complicated than I thought. I don't want to hold on to that anger anymore. I just want to move forward, if we can. Richard looked at her, his chest tight with emotion. We can, he said firmly. We can try. I don't know how we'll make sense of all this, but I want to be part of your life. I've already lost so much time. I don't want to lose anymore. Sophie gave him a small, tentative smile. I want that too. They sat in silence for a moment, the weight of the past still heavy but beginning to lift. Richard knew that this wouldn't be easy, that the pain of what had been lost would always linger. But now, for the first time, there was hope. There was a chance to rebuild, to create something new out of the broken pieces of the past. I'm sorry for everything, Richard said, his voice thick with emotion. For not being there. For not knowing. But I'm here now, and I'm not going anywhere. Sophie nodded, her tears finally spilling over, but her smile growing a little wider. Thank you, she whispered. For wanting to be here. They sat for a little while longer. The sound of the lake gently lapping against the shore as they both processed the enormity of what had just been revealed. It wasn't the closure Richard had hoped for, but it was a start. A fragile, tentative start toward healing. And for now, that was enough. And caught up in the whirlwind of building their careers and exploring the world. He might have mentioned something about how having children could complicate their fast-paced lives, but it was never meant as a firm declaration. It was just a thought, something he assumed they would revisit when the time was right. But Emily, it seemed, had held on to those words, letting them shape her decision in ways Richard never could have anticipated. Sitting there, the weight of it all pressed down on him. He felt regret so deep it was almost paralyzing. How could a passing comment, something he barely remembered, have had such an impact? How could he not have seen what Emily was feeling, the fear she carried, the loneliness she must have felt making that decision on her own? His thoughts turned to Sophie, the daughter he never knew, the life he had missed. And Daniel, his grandson, whose very existence had been hidden from him by the same fear that had kept Sophie from him all these years. The enormity of what he had lost, of the years that had slipped away, was overwhelming. But alongside the grief and regret, there was also a glimmer of hope. Sophie had given him a chance, a chance to be part of her life, to be there for Daniel. It was a chance he hadn't expected, and one he wasn't about to waste. He knew he couldn't change the past, couldn't undo the decisions Emily had made, or the words he had said. But he could make different choices now. He could step up and be the father and grandfather he had never had the opportunity to be. Richard took a deep breath, setting the journal and the letter aside. The pain of the past would always be with him, but he couldn't live there anymore. Emily's decisions, her fear, it had shaped their lives in ways he couldn't change, but he didn't have to let it define the future. He thought about his next steps, how he could reach out to Sophie more, 
how he could start building that relationship, piece by piece. He didn't want to push too hard, but he also didn't want to let too much time pass, not after everything they had already lost. The following morning, he called Sophie. His heart raced as the phone rang, each second feeling like an eternity. When she finally answered, her voice soft but steady, Richard felt a surge of relief. Hey, he said, his voice a bit shaky. I was thinking. Would you and Daniel like to come over for dinner this weekend? I'd really like to spend some time with you both. There was a brief pause on the other end of the line before Sophie responded. That sounds nice, she said quietly. We'd like that. Richard smiled, feeling that small spark of hope grow a little brighter. Great. I'll make something special. They chatted for a few more moments, making plans, and when they hung up, Richard felt lighter. It wasn't a solution to everything, and it wouldn't erase the years they had lost. But it was a step forward. A chance to start building the future, together. As the weekend approached, Richard found himself thinking less about the letter and more about the new memories he could create with Sophie and Daniel. It wouldn't be easy, and he knew they had a lot to work through, but for the first time in a long time, he felt like they had a future worth fighting for. That evening, as he prepared for their visit, Richard stood in his kitchen, the smell of a roast filling the air, and for the first time in years, he felt something he hadn't in a long time, contentment. It wasn't complete, and it wasn't perfect, but it was enough. When Sophie and Daniel arrived, the evening was filled with quiet conversation, soft laughter, and a sense of tentative peace. Daniel played happily, unaware of the complicated history surrounding him, and Sophie smiled more than Richard had ever seen her smile before. As the night drew to a close, Richard walked them to the door, the weight of the past still lingering, but no longer suffocating. They had started to carve out something new, something that held the promise of healing and connection. And for the first time in years, Richard allowed himself to believe that maybe, just maybe, they could build something meaningful out of the broken pieces of what had been lost. As he watched them leave, Richard stood in the doorway, the cool night air brushing against his skin, and he smiled. It wasn't the life he had once imagined, but it was a life. And that was enough. Nothing too serious, Sophie replied, smiling softly as she looked down at Daniel. Just a routine checkup. Richard crouched down further, reaching out a hand cautiously. Daniel, with his wide eyes peeking out from under his tiny hat, stared curiously at Richard before offering a little gurgle in response. Richard felt an unexpected warmth spread through him. This was his grandson, his flesh and blood. The reality of it all was slowly beginning to sink in, and in that moment, the weight of the past, the secrets, and the pain didn't seem quite as heavy. He's a strong little guy, Richard said, his voice filled with emotion he hadn't expected to feel so intensely. He stood back up, looking at Sophie. Thank you for inviting me. It means a lot. Sophie nodded, her expression soft but guarded. I figured it'd be good for us to spend more time together, she said, glancing at Daniel before meeting Richard's eyes. I don't want to rush things, but I want to give this a chance. Richard's heart swelled with hope. He knew the road ahead wouldn't be easy, but Sophie was giving him an opening, a chance to be present, to make up for lost time. Even if it would take time to truly bridge the gap between them. I want that too, Richard said, his voice steady but emotional. Whatever you need, however long it takes. I'm here. They walked into the pediatrician's office together, a quiet but significant step towards something new. As they sat in the waiting room, the silence between them wasn't uncomfortable, but rather filled with the weight of possibility. Sophie occasionally glanced at Richard, as if trying to gauge how he was handling this new role, while Richard focused on Daniel, feeling a strange yet fulfilling sense of purpose. As the appointment went on and the doctor gave Daniel a clean bill of health, Richard found himself immersed in the small but important details of his grandson's life, his growth, his milestones, the little things that Sophie had experienced on her own up until now. Richard realized just how much he had missed, but also how much there still was to be a part of. 
Outside the office, as they stood by the door once again, Sophie turned to Richard with a tentative smile. Thanks for coming today. It meant a lot. To both of us. Richard nodded, his chest tight with emotion. I'm glad I could be here. I want to be here for both of you. For as long as you'll have me. Sophie looked at him for a long moment, her eyes softening. We'll take it one day at a time. And that was enough for Richard. One day at a time was all he could ask for. As they said their goodbyes and went their separate ways, Richard walked away feeling something he hadn't felt in a long time, a sense of belonging. Of hope. It wasn't perfect, and there was still much to navigate, but for the first time in years, Richard felt like he had a future to look forward to. As he headed home, his mind filled with thoughts of Sophie and Daniel, Richard knew that the past could never be undone. The lost years were gone, but there was still time to build something new, a family, a connection, and a future that, though complicated, was worth fighting for. Willing to take this one step at a time, no rush, no unrealistic expectations, just an honest attempt at building something real. The shared understanding between them felt like a fragile yet vital thread, one they both knew could easily break if handled carelessly. As they walked together, Sophie pushed Daniel's stroller while Richard walked beside them, the cool autumn breeze brushing against their faces. There was a quiet sense of peace, though underneath, Richard could still feel the weight of all that had been unsaid, the years they had lost. But for now, he allowed himself to focus on what they had gained, a chance. They stopped at a small cafe nearby, a simple but cozy place with warm light streaming from the windows. It felt like the perfect spot to continue the conversation, one that didn't need to be forced but seemed to flow naturally. Richard held the door open as Sophie pushed Daniel inside, settling at a corner table where they could speak quietly. Over coffee, they talked about everyday things, Daniel's sleep schedule, the little milestones he was reaching, what he liked and didn't like. Richard listened intently, absorbing every detail, every small moment he had missed. It hurt, but it also gave him hope. He wasn't too late. He still had time to be part of this, to be there for Sophie and Daniel in ways that mattered. At one point, Sophie looked at Richard, her expression soft but thoughtful. You know. I didn't think this would feel as comfortable as it does, she admitted quietly. I've spent so long feeling like something was missing, but now, I think maybe it doesn't have to stay that way." Richard smiled, feeling that lump in his throat again. I've missed a lot, he said, his voice thick with emotion. But I don't want to miss anything else. Whatever it takes, Sophie, I'm here. For you, and for Daniel. Sophie gave him a small, tentative smile. I think we'll figure it out. Together. They sat in the cafe for a while longer, the atmosphere warm and calm, the future slowly unfolding before them. For the first time in what felt like forever, Richard felt a sense of belonging, a sense of family that had been absent for too long. It wasn't perfect, but it was enough. As they left the cafe and said their goodbyes, Richard watched Sophie and Daniel walk away, feeling lighter than he had in years. The path ahead wasn't easy, but for the first time, he believed it was one worth walking. One step at a time, they were moving forward toward healing, toward connection, and toward a future they could build together. Understand more about her life, about the choices she made. Anne? I found something. Sophie's voice trailed off, and Richard could sense the weight of what she was about to say. He put his coffee down, his eyes locked on hers. What did you find? He asked gently, bracing himself for whatever truth was about to surface. Sophie hesitated for a moment, as if gathering her thoughts. I found letters. Old ones, tucked away in some boxes of mom's things. They were from someone. A man she knew before you. I think she. I think she might have had another relationship before you met. Richard felt his heart skip a beat. He had suspected there were parts of Emily's life he didn't know but this was a revelation he hadn't anticipated. A relationship? He echoed, trying to keep his voice steady. Do you know who he was? Sophie nodded, her expression serious. His name was David. From what I can tell, 
They were involved for a while, but something happened. The letters don't say exactly, but it seems like they drifted apart before she met you. I'm not sure if she ever talked about him. Richard shook his head slowly, processing this new piece of the puzzle. No, she never mentioned anyone before me. He felt a mix of emotions, surprise, sadness, and a strange sense of curiosity. Did the letters say anything else? Anything about why they... And did things? Sophie shrugged, her face reflecting the uncertainty she felt. Not really. Just that it seemed like they were close, but then something changed. I guess she moved on, met you, and built a new life. Richard sat back, absorbing the information. He wasn't angry or upset, but the revelation added another layer to the already complicated feelings he had about Emily and their past. I don't know what to say, he admitted. I never imagined. But I guess we all have parts of our past we don't share. Sophie nodded. Yeah, I guess so. I just thought you should know. I don't think it changes anything between us or how I feel about her. It's just another part of the story. Richard reached out and gently touched Sophie's arm. Thank you for telling me. I'm glad you shared this with me. Whatever her past was, it doesn't change the fact that we're here now, trying to move forward together. Sophie gave a small smile, her eyes softening. I think mom loved you, dad. Whatever happened before, I think you were the person she chose. That's why it was so hard for her to tell you about me. Richard swallowed hard at the word dad, a wave of emotion crashing over him. It was the first time Sophie had called him that, and it meant more than he could express. I hope so, he said quietly. I really hope so. They sat in silence for a few moments, the weight of the conversation settling around them. But there was also a sense of relief, a shared understanding that, despite the complicated past, they were building something new. As Daniel let out a soft coo, both Richard and Sophie looked at him. Smiling at the little boy who had become the bridge between their fractured past and their hopeful future. I don't know what the future holds for us, Sophie said softly, her eyes on Daniel, but I think we're on the right path. Richard nodded, his heart full. We are. And whatever comes next, we'll face it together. In that moment, as the afternoon sun filtered through the windows, casting a warm glow over the room, Richard felt a deep sense of peace. There was still so much to unpack, so many things to work through, but for the first time in years, he felt like he was right where he belonged with his daughter and his grandson, ready to face whatever the future held, one step at a time. To hide this from you, but I felt like you needed to know, Sophie said softly, her voice steady but laced with concern. I found it a few days ago while I was going through mom's things. I don't know what to make of it, but it felt important. Richard sat back, the letter still clutched in his trembling hands. The revelation hit him like a tidal wave, and for a moment, he felt like the ground beneath him had shifted. James Porter, his old friend, someone he had trusted and cared for in his youth, had been involved with Emily, the woman Richard had loved deeply. The woman he thought he knew completely. The realization was too much to process all at once. I, I had no idea, Richard whispered, his voice barely audible. He shook his head, trying to make sense of the flood of emotions overwhelming him, betrayal, confusion, heartbreak. How could I not have known? Sophie's expression softened, and she reached out to place a comforting hand on his arm. I don't think it was about keeping it from you to hurt you, she said gently. I think maybe she was trying to protect you. Maybe it was something from her past that she thought was over, something that didn't matter anymore once she chose to be with you. Richard swallowed hard, the weight of Sophie's words settling on him. His mind raced back to his memories of James. They had been close once, inseparable in their youth. But life had taken them in different directions, and eventually, they had lost touch. Never in his wildest dreams had he imagined that James and Emily had shared something, a connection that Emily had never mentioned. He looked back at the letter, reading it again, trying to piece together the truth. James hadn't written it to stir up trouble. In fact, it seemed like he had never intended to send it at all. The letter spoke of regret, of lost opportunities, 
and of a choice that Emily had made a choice to be with Richard. Despite whatever had existed between her and James. I'm so sorry, Sophie said, her voice trembling slightly. I didn't know how to tell you, and I wasn't sure if I should, but I couldn't keep it from you. I just... I thought you deserved to know. Richard nodded, his throat tight with emotion. Thank you for telling me, he managed to say, though his voice was hoarse. I'm glad you did. I just... I don't know how to feel right now. Sophie nodded, understanding in her eyes. I didn't know how I felt when I first read it either. It's a lot to take in. Richard sat in silence for a few moments, staring down at the letter. Trying to reconcile this new piece of Emily's past with the woman he had loved. He had always believed that their relationship had been built on trust and honesty. And now he realized that there were parts of her life, significant parts, that she had kept hidden. I wish he had told me, Richard said quietly, his voice filled with regret. Even if it was difficult, even if it was something from her past, I wish she had trusted me enough to tell me the truth. Sophie nodded, her expression filled with empathy. I understand. But maybe she was scared. Maybe she thought telling you would change things between you. And in the end, she chose you, Dad. That's what matters, right? Richard blinked, the word dad hitting him once again with a rush of emotion. Sophie had called him that before, but each time she did, it felt like a step toward healing, toward the relationship he had longed for. Yeah, Richard said softly, his voice breaking slightly. She chose me. For all the pain and confusion swirling in his mind, that simple truth offered some comfort. Emily had chosen him, had built a life with him, even if there were parts of her past that she had kept to herself. And now, he had Sophie and Daniel, his family, a chance to rebuild what had been fractured. Sophie squeezed his arm gently, her eyes filled with understanding. We'll figure this out together. We're all still learning how to make sense of the past, but we can move forward, one step at a time. Richard smiled faintly, the warmth of her words sinking in. One step at a time, he echoed, nodding. We'll get through this. As they sat in the quiet of Sophie's apartment, the weight of the revelation slowly began to lift. There was still pain, still unanswered questions, but there was also hope, a fragile but growing sense that, despite everything, they could find a way forward. And in that moment, Richard knew that whatever had happened between Emily and James, it didn't change the future he wanted to build with Sophie and Daniel. He was ready to face it all, past and present, together with them. Before James responded, surprise evident in his voice. Richard. I didn't expect to hear from you. It's been a long time. Richard swallowed hard, his pulse quickening. The conversation he had dreaded for days was now unfolding, and he wasn't sure how to begin. The anger and confusion swirling inside him felt overwhelming, but he knew he needed to keep control. He needed answers. Yeah, it has, Richard said, his voice tight. He paused, struggling to find the right words. Listen, James. I found something. Something about you and Emily. There was another pause, this time longer, the silence on the other end of the line thick with tension. Finally, James spoke, his voice cautious. What? What are you talking about? Richard gripped the phone tighter, trying to steady his nerves. A letter. From you. To Emily. It was written years ago, but Sophie found it. It talks about you and Emily. Being involved. Is it true? Were you two together? The weight of the question hung in the air and Richard could feel his heart pounding in his chest. For a moment, there was only silence, and then James let out a slow, heavy sigh. Richard, I. I never wanted you to find out like this, James said, his voice low and filled with regret. But yes, it's true. Emily and I were involved before she met you. It was a long time ago, and we both agreed to leave it in the past. When she chose to be with you, I stepped aside. Richard closed his eyes, the confirmation hitting him like a punch to the gut. He had suspected it, but hearing the truth from James made it all too real. Why didn't you tell me? 
Richard asked, his voice breaking. Why did you keep this from me? You were my friend, James. I know, James replied, his voice filled with guilt. And I'm sorry. I should have told you. But when Emily chose you, I didn't want to complicate things. I thought. I thought it was over, that it didn't matter anymore. I never meant to betray you. Richard shook his head, his emotions boiling over. But it did matter. It mattered to me. I thought I knew everything about her, about our life together. And now I find out there was this whole part of her past that she never shared with me. I trusted you, James. I know, James said, his voice quiet and full of remorse. And I can't undo what's been done. But Richard, whatever happened between Emily and me, it ended before she met you. She loved you, man. She chose you. Richard felt a wave of conflicting emotions, anger, sorrow, and a deep sense of loss. I just... I don't know how to process this. I spent years grieving her, and now I feel like I never even knew her. James was silent for a moment, then spoke again, his voice soft. I can't change what happened, Richard. But I can tell you this, Emily loved you. She made her choice. And whatever we had, it was in the past. Richard exhaled, feeling a mix of frustration and resignation. He had gotten the answers he sought, but they brought little comfort. I don't know where this leaves us, Richard said quietly. I don't know if I can ever look at you the same way again. I understand, James replied, his voice heavy. And I'm truly sorry. If you never want to speak to me again, I get it. But I hope. I hope you'll remember that I never wanted to hurt you or Emily. There was a long silence before Richard finally spoke, his voice weary. I need time, James. I need time to figure this out. Take all the time you need, James said, his voice filled with regret. I'm sorry, Richard. Truly. Richard ended the call, the weight of the conversation settling over him like a heavy blanket. He had the answers now, but they only seemed to deepen the sense of betrayal and loss he felt. Emily had loved him, but she had also kept secrets. James had been his friend, but now that friendship felt tainted. Richard sat down, staring at the phone in his hand. The world felt different now, fractured in a way that couldn't be easily repaired. But amid the confusion and hurt, one thing remained clear, he had Sophie and Daniel. They were his future, and no matter what had happened in the past, he wasn't going to let it come between them. Taking a deep breath, Richard stood up and made his way to the window. The sun was setting behind the city skyline, casting a warm glow over the buildings. For the first time in days, he allowed himself to focus on what was ahead, not what had been lost. It would take time, time to heal, time to rebuild, but he was ready to move forward. One step at a time. Struggled to keep his emotions in check, but the sense of betrayal was overwhelming. The friend he had trusted, and the woman he had loved more than anything, had shared something behind his back even if it had been before their relationship became serious. It didn't change the fact that it had been kept from him, buried in the past, only to resurface now like a wound he hadn't realized was festering. You should have told me, Richard said, his voice trembling with barely controlled anger. I had a right to know. Instead, I'm finding out now, years later, after I've already mourned her, already lost her. James's voice was soft, filled with guilt. I know. I was wrong. We both were. But Richard, it didn't mean what you think. Emily loved you. She chose you. Whatever we had, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't some great love, it was... something in the past. And I regret it. Richard stood by the window, staring out into the city, his mind racing. But it was still something. And neither of you told me. You let me go on thinking I knew everything about her, about our life together. I trusted you, James. I trusted her. There was a long silence on the other end. Finally, James spoke again, his voice low and pained. I'm sorry, Richard. I can't undo what happened. But I never meant to betray you. And I never wanted to hurt you. 
I was just scared. Scared of what it would do to us, to you. Richard's grip on the phone tightened, his knuckles white. Well, it's done now. And I have to live with it. Jane sighed heavily. I wish I had told you sooner. I wish we could have dealt with this when it happened. But I can't change the past. All I can say is that Emily loved you, and whatever you're feeling right now, I hope you don't let it take that away from you. Richard clenched his jaw, the mix of anger and sadness swirling inside him like a storm. He didn't know what to say, didn't know how to respond to the man who had been such a big part of his past, and now felt like a stranger. I don't know if I can forgive you, James, Richard said quietly. I don't know if I can forgive either of you. But I need time. I understand, James said, his voice full of remorse. Take all the time you need. And if you ever want to talk again, I'll be here. I'm sorry, Richard. Truly. Richard ended the call without another word, feeling utterly drained. He stood there for a long time, the phone still in his hand, the weight of everything that had been said pressing down on him like a heavy blanket. He had wanted answers, and now he had them, but they brought him little peace. He thought of Emily, of their life together, of the love they had shared. It had been real, hadn't it? Even with this secret between them? He wasn't sure what to believe anymore. But as his thoughts spiraled, one thing remained clear in his mind, Sophie and Daniel. They were his family now, and whatever had happened in the past, he couldn't let it destroy the future he was trying to build with them. Taking a deep breath, Richard put the phone down and walked away from the window. He needed to focus on what mattered, on the people still in his life, the people he could still hold on to. The past was full of pain, but the future was still waiting. And for Sophie and Daniel, he was willing to do whatever it took to move forward, one step at a time. Sorry, Dad, Sophie said softly after a long silence, her voice filled with empathy. I can't imagine how hard this is for you. I didn't know what you'd find when you called him, but I thought. I thought you deserved to know the truth, even if it's painful. Richard nodded, the weight of the conversation with James still heavy on his chest. I thought knowing would help, he said, his voice strained, but it doesn't. It just. It makes everything more complicated. I don't know how to reconcile what I know now with the life I thought I had with your mom. Sophie placed a comforting hand on his arm, her touch gentle but grounding. I wish I could say something that would make it better, but I think this is something that's going to take time. I don't know if the answers you're looking for will ever make sense, but I do know that you loved her. And she loved you. Whatever happened in the past, it doesn't change that. Richard swallowed hard, blinking back the tears that threatened to spill over. I want to believe that, he said quietly, but right now, it feels like everything I knew about her is. Is slipping away. And I don't know how to hold on to the good parts when there's so much I didn't know. Sophie nodded, understanding his struggle. It's okay to feel like that, she said softly. It's okay to be angry and hurt. But you don't have to figure it all out at once. We'll take it one step at a time, like we've been doing. Richard looked at her, the woman his daughter had become, and for a moment, his heart ached for all the years they had missed. But amid that pain, there was also hope, hope for the future, hope for a connection that could still grow. One step at a time, Richard repeated, his voice steadier now. He glanced over at Daniel, who was playing quietly on the floor, his little hands exploring the world with innocent curiosity. I don't want this to come between us, Sophie. Whatever happens, whatever I need to work through, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose this. Sophie smiled, her eyes softening. You won't. We're in this together, remember? Richard nodded, the knot in his chest loosening slightly. I'm glad I have you, he said, his voice thick with emotion. I don't know how I'd be handling all this without you. We'll figure it out, Sophie reassured him. And whatever answers you need, we'll face them together. As they sat there in the quiet of the evening, the weight of the past still hung over them. But the promise of moving forward felt more real than it had in days. It wasn't going to be easy, Richard knew that. But with Sophie and Daniel by his side, 
he felt a glimmer of hope. They would take it one day at a time. And maybe, just maybe, they could find healing in the midst of all the pain. As Richard sat down, watching his grandson giggle and squirm in Sophie's arms, the sight warmed his heart in a way that was becoming more familiar each day. These moments, simple, quiet, and full of life, were what he had been missing for so long. Sophie looked over at him, her expression soft but thoughtful. You know, she said gently, I've been thinking a lot about everything. About mom, about James, about us. And I keep coming back to the same thing. We can't change the past. But we can decide what to do with it. Richard nodded, feeling the truth of her words. The pain and confusion of the past still lingered, but it wasn't consuming him the way it had in the beginning. He had begun to see that the real work, the healing, was in how he chose to move forward. Not in trying to unravel every painful detail of what had happened. You're right, he said, his voice steady. I spent so much time trying to make sense of it all, but maybe there's no real sense to be made. Maybe it's just about accepting what happened and focusing on what we have now. Sophie smiled softly, her eyes reflecting the same hope that Richard was beginning to feel. Exactly. We have each other now, and we have Daniel. That's what matters. Richard looked at Daniel, his small hands reaching out to grab at the world around him, full of curiosity and innocence. I don't want to lose this, Richard said, his voice thick with emotion. I don't want to lose you or Daniel. I know we have a lot to work through, but I want to be here. I want to be part of your lives. Sophie nodded, her smile widening. You are. And we'll figure it out together. One step at a time, remember? Richard chuckled softly, the phrase having become a mantra between them. One step at a time, he repeated. They sat in comfortable silence for a while, watching the sun glint off the surface of the lake. The sound of birds and children playing in the distance filling the air. Richard realized that for the first time in a long time, he felt lighter, freer. The truth about Emily and James, while painful, no longer had the same power over him. It was part of his past, yes, but it didn't have to define his future. As Daniel wriggled in Sophie's lap, Richard reached out, gently taking his grandson's tiny hand in his own. The simple gesture brought a swell of emotion to his chest, a deep gratitude for this new beginning. He looked at Sophie, the daughter he was finally getting to know, and smiled. We've come a long way, haven't we? Sophie met his gaze, her eyes shining with understanding and warmth. We have, she said softly. And we've still got a long way to go. But we're getting there. Richard nodded, feeling that glimmer of hope once again. The path ahead might still be uncertain, but they were walking it together. And for the first time in a long time, Richard felt like that was enough. And building something together, Richard continued, his voice steady with resolve. The past will always be a part of us, but it doesn't have to dictate our future. I don't want to waste any more time looking back when I have so much to look forward to with both of you. Sophie smiled, her eyes shining with a mixture of relief and warmth. I'm really proud of you for that, Dad, she said softly, the word Dad slipping out naturally now, a sign of the growing bond between them. I think it's the right choice. The past has been heavy for both of us, but you're right. What matters is what we do with the present and the future. Richard felt a sense of peace settle over him. It wasn't that the pain or confusion had disappeared, but it no longer held the same grip on him. He had come to terms with the fact that some things couldn't be explained, and some wounds might never fully heal. But he also realized that healing wasn't about erasing the past, it was about learning to live with it and finding a way to move forward. As they continued to watch the ducks swimming lazily across the water, Daniel squirmed excitedly in Sophie's lap, his laughter filling the air. Richard reached out, brushing his grandson's tiny hand with his fingers, feeling a surge of love and gratitude. This is what matters, Richard said quietly, his eyes on Daniel. Being here for him, for you. That's what I'm going to focus on. Sophie nodded, her smile widening. And we're glad to have you here. It's taken time, but I think we're finally getting to where we need to be. Richard chuckled softly. 
One step at a time, right? Sophie laughed lightly. Exactly. One step at a time. As they sat together, the warm afternoon sun casting a golden glow over the park, Richard allowed himself to fully embrace the moment. The future still held uncertainties, but for the first time in a long time, he wasn't afraid of it. He was ready to face it alongside Sophie and Daniel. Whatever came next, they would face it together. And that was enough. Could have anticipated. His role as a grandfather began to take shape, not in grand gestures or major life changes, but in the small, meaningful moments that connected him more deeply to Sophie and Daniel. He found himself more present than he had ever been, learning to enjoy the simple joys of family life that had once felt so distant. He would visit Sophie and Daniel regularly, helping out in small ways, taking Daniel to the park, babysitting while Sophie ran errands, or just spending time with them, watching as Daniel grew and developed. Each day brought a new milestone, a new discovery, and with it, a deeper sense of fulfillment that Richard had never expected. One afternoon, as Richard sat on the floor playing with Daniel, who was now crawling around with increasing confidence, Sophie looked over at him from the kitchen, a smile on her face. You're really good with him, you know, she said, her voice full of warmth. I always wondered what it would be like to have my dad around, and now. I can't imagine you not being here. Richard paused, looking up at her, feeling that familiar lump in his throat. I'm just trying to make up for lost time, he said softly. But I'm glad I can be here now. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Sophie wiped her hands on a dish towel and came over, sitting beside them on the floor. I think we've both made peace with the past, she said, her eyes meeting his. What matters now is this, Daniel, us, the life we're building. Richard nodded, a sense of peace settling over him. You're right. And I'm grateful for it. Every single day. They sat in comfortable silence for a while, watching Daniel babble to himself as he played with his toys. Richard marveled at how much his life had changed in such a short time. The grief and regret that had once consumed him had been replaced by something far more powerful love, connection, and a new sense of purpose. As the months passed, Richard found that the pain of the past no longer had the same hold on him. He would always carry it with him, of course, but it no longer defined him. He had a future to look forward to a future with Sophie and Daniel. A future where he could be the father and grandfather he had always wanted to be. One evening, as they all sat together after dinner, Daniel fast asleep in Sophie's arms. Richard looked at his daughter and grandson and felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. I know I've said it before, but I want you to know how much this means to me, he said quietly. Being part of your lives. It's the greatest gift I could have asked for. Sophie smiled, her eyes glistening with emotion. We're glad to have you, Dad. Daniel's lucky to have a grandfather like you. Richard's heart swelled at her words. He had spent so many years feeling lost, disconnected from the world around him. But now, in this moment, he felt like he had finally found his place. And for the first time in a long time, Richard knew that he was exactly where he was meant to be. Richard sat back in his chair, the quiet evening surrounding him like a comforting embrace. The skyline, once a reminder of everything he had lost, now symbolized something different, a future he was beginning to cherish. He thought back to how far he had come, how Sophie and Daniel had become the anchors he didn't know he needed. The relationship with Sophie was still a work in progress, filled with moments of vulnerability and openness. They didn't always have all the answers, and sometimes the questions about the past still resurfaced. But they were learning how to navigate the complexities together, with patience and understanding. Each day they spent together, their bond grew stronger, and with Daniel, Richard felt a sense of purpose he had thought was beyond him. Daniel had become a source of joy that filled Richard's heart in ways he never expected. Watching his grandson grow, discovering the world with curiosity, had given him a new appreciation for the simple moments, moments he had missed out on in the past but was now fully embracing. Whether it was a day at the park or reading bedtime stories, those shared moments with Daniel made Richard feel alive again. As he gazed out at the fading sunset, Richard reflected on Emily. 
He still visited her grave occasionally, but the visits had changed. They weren't about holding on to the grief or the unanswered questions anymore. Instead, they were moments of reflection acknowledging the love they had shared but recognizing that he needed to let go of the weight of the past to fully live in the present. He would always love Emily, but that love had evolved into something quieter. Something that allowed him to move forward without the bitterness and pain. Now, Richard realized his focus was on the future. He had found a family in Sophie and Daniel, and with them, a new sense of belonging. He hadn't expected this new chapter of his life, but it was one that he had come to cherish deeply. The loneliness that once defined him had faded, replaced by the warmth of connection and the promise of more moments to come. Richard took a deep breath, feeling the quiet contentment wash over him. It wasn't the life he had imagined all those years ago, but in many ways, it was even more meaningful. There was hope now, a future filled with love, family, and the possibility of more happiness. For the first time in years, Richard allowed himself to believe that the future, no matter how uncertain, could be bright. And as the last rays of the sun dipped below the horizon, he smiled, knowing that whatever lay ahead, he was ready to embrace it fully.